Hello everyone, Sableye here and welcome back to the channel. Today we have just recently gotten first place on the showdown regulation D ladder right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly go over the team that got me here. And then I'm actually going to wait for someone to pass me. I'm going to cut the video and then we're going to play games and we're going to try to catch up back to the uh, first place on the ladder. So that way we get some games in addition to the team as well. So you guys are going to be seeing the team on your screen guys. I'm not really going to share my spreads quite yet. I know it's day three of the format or technically day negative 17 of the format. I don't know because technically it doesn't start till July, but I am going to keep some of these spreads hidden uh, just for the time being. But the team concept is going to remain the same. And, and honestly guys, nothing is completely out there. But uh, yeah, we're kind of just uh, kind of big chilling. So this team, honestly, it started from the Rillaboom Urshifu Amoongus core. And back in Spike Myth Cup, basically the end of Sword and Shield era, for those that are unfamiliar, uh, it was like a fan-made format. There was no Dynamax and stuff like that. And Urshifu and Mungus Rillaboom, that was a really, really solid core. And generally, it was paired with Aleki. So when I built this team, I had Aleki here. I actually had Hisui and Zoroark, Regileki, and and Chiyu over the Heatran, Thunderous, and Fluttermane. Uh, that team was actually built on stream a couple nights ago, so that was a really fun game. And then I was playing with it, and I'm like, hey, this is actually still a really good team. Let me find to it. So three, four adjustments later, we ended up here. And honestly, just fake out beside Urshifu, guys, it is just so good. Now playing for like three, I guess it was like almost like a year, almost a year now, without actually like Urshifu, I guess it's closer to like eight months. But either way, it really made me forget how broken just being able to attack through Protect was. Like, it is such a good ability. It's 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 broken, guys. There, there's nothing else to say other than it's broken. Uh, either way, we've got Mystic Water, and we're Terra Grass. And a lot of people's answers to Urshifu right now are this friendly Amoongus, which I have chosen as well as one of my Amoongus answers. So... It's just a good way to get around that, and if that's their only answer, I don't care anymore, right? Like, if you're saying your Urshifu answer is going to be Rocky Helmet Amoongus, my Urshifu is going to run over you, right? You're not going to be able to pivot around because you can't keep your other pieces alive long enough. I have the fake out support, and I can effectively just ignore Amoongus between Rillaboom being a grass type and Thunder is having these safety goggles. Like, I just have so many options to ignore Amoongus, and if that becomes your only Urshifu answer, it's kind of just over. But Terra Grass Urshifu, been really, really solid. Standard moveset here with the Surging Strikes, Close Combat, Aqua Jet. That's, those are the three moves you are going to see, uh, barring maybe some sort of random spread or a choice, or a choice variant where they're not going to have Protect. Uh, but these are the moves you're generally going to see. Uh, Rillaboom, still good guys, still good without the Grassy Glide, I do miss it, there are so many scenarios I get into this, into with this team where I'm like, if I could just Grassy Glide right now, I, I win the game, right, and it, it sucks that we don't have it, but I also think the meta is definitely better off without Rillaboom having Grassy Glide, because now it's a good Pokemon without being a broken Pokemon, and I, I'm kind of happy for the change. It's going to get take a while to get used to not having the Grassy Glide. But uh, honestly, just your standard AV Rillaboom here. Uh, I opted to not put, like, Stomping Tantrum on Rillaboom. Mainly because, like, I was only ever clicking it versus something like a Heatran. And the Heatran is just going to change its typing anyways if it sees something like the Stomping Tantrum in the open sheet. Or if they're just expecting Stomping Tantrum Rillaboom. They're just going to, like changed their typing into a grass type which is the common type right now anyways so av just felt correct to me uh sorry just dropping it made more sense u-turn for positioning and i think positioning with this team is super super important because you have so many scenarios where you can start cycling around right like i can have a moongus rillaboom on the field and if i expect them that they're gonna oh they're gonna make a hard call and they're gonna call my rillaboom to like U-turn here and they're going to spore that slot. Well, I'm going to swap Amoongus out, U-turn, get my Amoongus in, and then they're going to spore their Amoongus on the switch in, right? So just being able to position, reset my fake outs beside the Urshifu, really, 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 really important. And then knockoff is just too nice. It's too nice to not have in this format, right? You get stuff like Cresselia. I've actually knocked off a fair share of Rocky Helmets from opposing Amoongus on turn one, just to get rid of, just to get rid of that possibility. And then my grassy terrain, the grassy terrain just starts healing me up and I don't have to worry about that Rocky Helmet in the late game with my Urshifu anymore. It just makes things a little bit safer going into the end game. And 
Heat Train, which is probably the next part of this core, just to complete the Firewater Grass core. This is something you're going to see commonly, I would think. The Rillaboom Urshifu Heat Train or the Urshifu Amoongus Heat Train. Stuff like this is what you're going to see. This is going to be common. This is like, I don't know if I want to call it like the, the new balance or the Regulation D balance quite yet because like it's still super early format but it's been working and it's definitely a balancey team so this is definitely one of the cores you're gonna see so nothing crazy here but uh, heat wave earth power substitute protect uh, you can opt for no substitute I personally love substitute on heatran I think it gives me a lot of positions where I can get in front of like an Amoongus and I can just click so sub and force them like switch out right like if I'm in front of Amoongus plus something and I have fake out. I can fake out whatever is beside the Amoongus and click sub. I have a free sub that turn. There's nothing they can do about it. And then they still have to deal with Heatran. Just fire steel Heatran. Just an amazing typing as it always has been. And now we have the added benefit of saying, Hey, Urshifu, I'm no longer weak to you. Hey, Landorus, I'm no longer weak to your Earthquakes. So Terra Grass, once again, going to be something you guys are, are going to be seeing if you haven't touched the format. But if you've touched the format at all, I'm sure you've seen Terra Grass Heatran somewhere on the ladder. It's not like a too surprising core. Uh, Flash Flyer is still arguably better because when you Terra Grass, you don't want to be weak to it, right? You could try to like get cheeky with like Citrus Berry and like Flame Body so you can burn the Urshifus on switching in. But I don't think that's the same. I think this is just right now it's standard moveset, just nothing crazy. Uh, Fluttermane as well. Pretty much this is just kind of a, I, I want to say it's a leftover from Regulation C because it's just like a spe your standard specs Fluttermane. I don't know if like you need to invest in the extra defense or something like that, but it was probably, just, it's, it's just, honestly, it's just my, it's just my Regulation C Fluttermane spread, guys. I didn't really put too much uh, stock or thought process into this one. It, it functions exactly what I needed to do on this team. It lives things, it does damage back to the Urshifu, it puts a lot of pressure on. And what I like about Fluttermane, what I, let me rephrase that. What I disliked about Fluttermane when I initially tried it in the format is it just felt like everything was just kind of going too fast. People were running uh, Aleki. People were running Scarf Urshifu. People, right? Just so many different things that would slow it down. Uh, Basque Legion in Rain was a little bit of a problem as well. Then you had the Torn with Tailwind beside their Urshifus. That was just killing you. But then I decided to pair it with Thunderous. And pairing it with Thunderous with Scary Face really helped mitigate some of those threats. Because now if you want to outpace me with Iron Bundle, I'm just going to slow it down and I'm going to kill you. If you want to outpace me by clicking Tailwind plus something, well, the Torn's going to click Tailwind. I don't care about it. So I can just slow down the Torn's partner. And probably if it's the Urshifu and it's like a Bandit variant, it's going to go down to my Fluttermane. If it's a Sash variant, it gets a little bit trickier. But chances are my Fluttermane's not dying to that. Then I also have a Moongus switch-ins. But I can also slow down stuff like Aleki with Scary Face. I did start with Thunderwave when I built the team initially, or when I threw it on a team initially, I should say, but just overall Scary Face has felt a little bit nicer. I'm not sure how I feel about Eerie Impulse yet. It is really nice into stuff like opposing Fluttermanes and, and the like. It's just, I haven't really clicked it that much, so I don't know if there's a better move somewhere, but all in all, Thunderous has been a solid addition to the team. It's a little a little shaky, right? Because like your mono Thunderbolt, which is the same problem as a Lucky, where you just kind of get walled by the ground type. You don't get hit by the ground type, which is a nice little added benefit, but you also just get walled by it too. So not not the greatest for dealing with your ground types, but with an Urshifu and a Rillaboom and a big big damaging Fluttermane, I should be able to get through those most of the time, and I haven't had too much of an issue with it. But this is pretty much the team, guys. Nothing... Like I said, it's nothing crazy, right? If, if you clicked on the video expecting like a super crazy team with like Hisuian Pokemon and stuff like that, you're not going to see it here. Well, you'll see it here eventually, just not not right now. I went standard with this, got first on the ladder, feels pretty good. This is a core you're going to see a lot of, guys. This is maybe something you want to keep in mind if you're thinking about matchups. If not the Fluttermane Thunderous editions, definitely the Firewater Grass core of Urshifu Heatran. And probably Rillaboom and Amoongus. I wouldn't be surprised if you see both of them stick around. I have debated dropping Rillaboom for something else. Haven't gone farther than saying, oh, maybe maybe something else is better here. So if there is anything else that's better, I don't know. But uh, I'm sure by now we've been passed. So uh, let's go see if we can get our rank 1 back. And we are back. We have officially been passed. We're going to jump right into things. We're going to try and change this. I think I'm going to be able to do it with 2 wins. But we might need to get 3 depending on who we end up pulling. But uh, needless to say, we have to win all three. And we are here. And guys, you know, 
I was just talking to my buddy Pangy, and Pangy's like, Ryan, how do you beat the non-existent Dondozos? Well, we're about to find out if the Dondozo line works. Ah, uh, here we go. Also, I do apologize. My webcam uh, decided to uh, not work today. So, yeah, here we are. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, uh, you know, this still works out for you guys, and it doesn't take away from the video. But I am working on getting that fixed. Uh, ideally versus a Dondozo, you really, really want to see open team sheets, especially with the team that I'm running, because I need to know where I need to force the Terra, and not having these open sheets is going to be really problematic. However, I think I can almost make it work. Now, I think Fluttermane Thunderous both come, that's a guarantee. Also, bringing in the Amoongus, that's... These are must-haves in this matchup. The last one is the questionable slot. I don't necessarily love Urshifu because like, yes, I crit the Dozo, but it's resisting me. Now, if I knew it was like Terra Steel or like a different Terra there where Surging Strikes would become like neutral, you run, you bring the Urshifu, right? But I can't afford that Gambit here if I did, if it's just like regular Dozo, like Terra Grass stuff, right? So then part of me wants Heatran and part of me wants Rillaboom. I think it's going to be Heatran strictly on the way that since I don't have the open sheets and I can't confirm what's going on with their items. Fake Out loses a lot of value when I can't see where they have like a Covert Cloak, where they have a Sash, where they have a Terra Ghost. So Heatran seems a little bit more standard into this. And we'll see if we can get it done. Not the lead I was looking for, but it's not the end of the world. Because what we can do is we kind of force a Terra on one of these two, right? Now, the scary part... <clears throat> is I don't know if it's going to be like Flying Dragonite or like the E-Speed option. Because if it's not the E-Speed option, it's a little more scary. Because like the E-Speed option, I just tear a Ghost with Thunderous and I gain. However, here, I don't think it's going to be E-Speed. They don't have the... Like they're going to have E-Speed, but I don't think it's going to be like the big damage dealing E-Speed stuff. So unfortunately, I think it's... I have to either lose Fluttermane or bring in Heatran. So I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to break a potential multi-scale, I think. It's a little shaky, but if I can catch a Heat Wave, oh, they are going to go Terra Normal into Thunderous. We live those. It's not the end of the world, but I don't think we live the double up. Yeah, I should have ghosted. Like, it's just unfortunate that I have no real way to figure that out in a best-of-one scenario with closed sheets, right? Because I, I don't hate the position that we're in. Anyways, this is just a Heat Wave, and I can't protect becoming the problem. Right, obviously they can't e spit into me, so I think it's just a heat wave and a dazzling gleam. And if they are gonna actually I lock Moonblast and try to get this TU down as low as possible. Because that Dragonite should be switching out. Or just taking fifty percent to twenty five percent to heat ran. That's fine. Gonna give me my flash fire, that doesn't really matter. It's also a scarf to you, but because of that we should be able to take it down thanks to the flash fire. And we're not out of this game anymore by any means. They cannot e-speed my Fluttermane. The Bandit e-speed is only doing 25% to my Heatran, so it's not a threat. We also see the fact that they did not bring the Don Dozo. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to simply click a Heat Wave. I'm going to bring in my Amoongus. They might try to reset something, but at the end of the day, that's not a big deal. This should be a double. It's not. They go into Amoongus. Really, really good for me. Here's a big damaging Heat Wave. Down goes the Dragonite. No longer have to worry about that. The Aleki is what we have to be concerned with at the moment. But I think it's just a redirect. I tear a grass, I heat wave, and I redirect their side of the field. And if they go for an Electro, that's fine. They go for a Thunderbolt, it doesn't kill me. If there's specs in the Shadow Ball, it's going into a Moongus, that's fine. Heat wave comes out, brings the direct Alecky down to Sash. Flutter goes down. We are going to take this W here. And, uh, you know, I don't know why they didn't bring the Dozo. <laughs> but we are now 1643. We're, uh, we're creeping in. We're creeping in. Okay. So... This is one I'd really love to see some open sheets. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I would love some open sheets. Hey, let's go. Okay, so they 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 heard me, guys. They heard me with the open sheets. We got the specs flutter, sash Ursh. Um, a little annoying and a little problematic, but honestly, I think I can make it work. The biggest, the, honestly, the biggest threat is Farigaraf. And. The biggest threat is Farigaraf because it just prevents my Thunderous from being my normal counter to this. Okay. The biggest threat still being that Farigaraf, being that Armor Tail, because my big thing is like if they're gonna go like 
torn Urshifu, they have to Tailwind, right? And if they have to Tailwind, it's not a problem. So I'm still going to lead Thunders. I think it's a really, really solid lead here. It's a question of what I want to lead beside it. And I'm going to bring Rillaboom just because it forces things onto the field. They are, they are Covert Cloak Torn, so I don't love it as much. It's going to be Flutter Urshifu in the end game. It's really just what I want to lead. I think I don't really want to lead Heatran, so it's going to be Flutter. This is bad. This is bad. I panicked. I need a Moongus here. But it's okay. This actually isn't a bad lead for me. I can actually work off of this. Uh, they don't think they had Trick Room. They have Trick Room, but like, what are they doing? They're not setting it up. They don't want Trick Room up right now, so we're not going to see something like that. I'm going to go after the TU. I'm going to go Thunderbolt. I'm going to tear a water, and I'm going to click a U-turn. I could drum beating as well, but I want to get off the field. Hmm. Hmm. But if I drum beating in a Trick Room, it's, there's no way they Trick Room here. I'm just going to U-turn off the field. I'm going to reposition here. Big dodge, but I did waste my Terra for that, so not great. Big damage into TU. Fluttermane should be safe. I don't... I mean, if they Hyper Voice, it doesn't scare me. And if they Psychic, it's not... I mean, I can't go Urshifu. Like, that's off the table, right? Switching in Urshifu there is never going to be a thing. Thunderous is going to be alive, which is really, really nice here. So, the big thing now is TU does have Protect. And if they want to set Trick Room, I want to Hard Pivot in my Rillaboom. And that just gives me... Positioning a Dazzling Gleam from this rate is going to kill Chiyu. So I can pivot in my Rillaboom. I can go Dazzling Gleam, get some chip damage off, and kind of keep cooking. Yeah, I'm okay with this. They should protect Trick Room, and if they do that, then I... Oh, no protect. Cool. I'm more than fine with that. And it's just actually going to be a Psychic into Fluttermane. So it's really looking like they just don't want... They just don't want Trick Room. Which is really, really good for me. I can kind of make that work. Like, really, really well, honestly. Landers can come in. I'm okay with this, because this is just a U-turn off the Farigarath. Are we Scarf on this Landers? What are we seeing? It's AV, Terra Flying. So that's where your Terra is going to be right now. So I'm going to sack Thunderous to reset my Fluttermane. And I'm just going to U-turn off the Farigarath for some damage. Because chances are the AV, bulky AV Landerses, are going to still be slower than my Urshifu here. So I'm going to U-turn for some, just recycle some stuff and sack my Thunderous here. Should be Terra Flying. Yep. There's the Terra Blast Thunderous Tank stat. I don't really care what Farigarath does too much, but unfortunately, I do have to go back into Fluttermane. It's going to be a Psychic and have to tip. That's really big. That is really, really, really big. That gives me an option now because now I can kind of just go Urshifu and just bully down this Landorus. It can't protect this slot. The Farigarath could try to click Trick Room. I still have Cycles around that with an AV Rillaboom. Farigarath isn't going to one-shot my Urshifu because of their just leftover stuff. And I could lock Thunderbolt here. In fact, I'm going to because there's no switch in for it. And it's going to do the most damage to Landorus. And we're just going to double it. Yeah, AV Landorus, get on out of here. The para shouldn't matter. I believe my Urshifu is just going to be faster than this Landorus anyways. Especially because of the AV variant. They're actually going to Psychic into my Fluttermane now. And that is really, really good for us. They're going to bring in their own Fluttermane. Now this gets dicey. Now this gets dicey. I think it's just pivot in Rillaboom and protect. And then I can gauge it based on there. Are they specs? They are specs. They kind of have to lock Gleam. But I don't. I just don't want to be locked into what I'm locked into right now. So we're just going to reset real quick. Nothing crazy going on right now. We do actually lose our grass, which is not great. But they do lock Gleam. And it's going to be Psychic into Urshifu as well. Okay. So there's a few ways to play this. And I think the best way to play this is to click uh, drum beating into Fluttermane, sack my Fluttermane, and then have my Urshifu Fluttermane sweep in the end game. That's bad. That was not supposed to kill me. Drum beating does get into the Fluttermane though, which is really really good. We should live this psychic. Beautiful. Scary end game. <clears throat> Scary end game. But because we slowed down their Fluttermane, surging strikes takes it out. I knock off your leftovers, and I surging strikes the, the Flutter. This should still be fine. This should be more than fine. Their best play is to Trick Room, but if they Trick Room, they're not putting on damage. They can't protect their Fluttermane from the incoming Surging Strikes. And this is what the Drum Beating plus Urshifu Core just does, right? The knockoff goes into Farigarath. It's impossible for them to pick one. If they, if they 
Yeah, if they do that, they need a crit like a hyper voice. But I don't even think a crit hyper voice. You turn technically become stronger now. But I don't think a crit hyper voice is going to win them this game. They did crit the hyper voice. Didn't even do half. That is DG and that should be rank one reach. I only gained seven points. I only gained six points. You got to be kidding me. We got to play again. All right, we play another one. No worries. All right, so we play another one. Like I said, we play another one. No big deal. We're going to get this first place, guys. It, getting three games for you guys is just more content. Now, this is by far the hardest matchup for the team. Uh, it's just so methodical, and you need to get the calls dead on versus the Dragonite Shen Pao. This is the hardest matchup for the team. The good news is the back half doesn't look as threatening as some of the normal back halves I've seen with Dragonite Shen Pao, so this should be workable. It would just be really, really nice if I had sheets and could figure out what was going on. But I have to go with the standard game plan of Flutter Urshifu with Amoongus Heatran in the back. And basically the concept here is I double into Shen Pao. They're going to double my Urshifu with an E-Speed Sucker Punch or an E-Speed something. I click Dazzling Gleam and I Aqua Jet. Ideally it's E-Speed Ice Spinner calling my Urshifu to like switch out. They double my Urshifu, that's fine. I kill the Shen Pao, I chip the Dragonite. Fluttermane then starts putting down the Dragonite that can no longer touch the Fluttermane since it's banded itself into E-Speed. And from there we should be okay. Now obviously there's lines where that just doesn't work. Which is why this is one of the most difficult matchups for the team. But there's the Terra Normal, there's the E-Speed, into Ursh. There's my Aqua Jet into Shen Pao. Is it the double into Ursh? I'm the faster Fluttermane. And you guys do not understand how absolutely massive being the faster Fluttermane is right here. So what they're going to do is they're going to E-Speed Ursh. I bring in my Amoongus to take that damage, to take the damage from the Urshifu and reset my, my Fluttermane. And I just click. Uh, I think it's just Surging Strikes if I get it off because I'm going to die to E-Speed. There's no reason to protect. Protecting doesn't help me. I'm dead to an E-Speed the next turn. I need to recycle so that my Fluttermane can come back on the field. If I get a chance, I kill the Dragonite. Yeah, E-Speed the Urshifu. That's fine. This will be a Surging Strikes. Yes, it will. Still no indication of if they're going to be Choice Scarfed or not. But the good news is, without be them not being beside Shen Pao, means Amoongus is going to be able to survive the Dazzling Gleam, uh, the, uh, the E-Speed. So I just Rage Powder and I drop a Dazzling Gleam myself. They're forced off the field. They can E-Speed my Amoongus, that's fine. I'm not too s concerned about it. Rage Powder, unfortunately, was the wrong move here. But what I get to do now is just recycle my Amoongus. Actually, I could just also protect it, because they can't really switch in anything. And if they stay on the field with Dragonite, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I think I, I think I reset Amoongus. I bring in Heatran, and I just Dazzling Gleam. It's a little shaky because of this Arcanine that's on the field, so I'm going to have to be smart with that, but I think Grass Terra Heatran can still seal this game. So we're going to do this. E-Speed's going to go into Heatran. That's fine by me. Dazzling Gleam's going to get some chip damage here. I'm assuming it's just going to be like a Flare Blitz into my Flutter. Yeah, and it's actually not going to kill my Flutter main. And that not killing my Flutter main should be enough. So I go Terra Grass. Uh, still gets a little annoying. Still gets a little dicey. Because this should be an Aqua Jet into my Fluttermane. But then Arcanine can't really touch my Heatran. So I think it's... Uh, I think it's just Earth Power the Arc and get a Moongus in. I think that's just the correct play. That's unfortunate, but fine. Surging, Rocky Helmet's going to do exactly what we need Rocky Helmet to do right here. And still being on the field with Amoongus just makes this a lot easier to clean up. Um, this is Earth Power Arc, and I'm staying on the field. I'm just going to let things go. I'm assuming the Urshifu is going to be faster than the Arc, but... Uh, I just redirect. Yeah, they E-Speed with that. Their Rocky Helmet, it takes them down. Because of that, the Rage Powder goes off, they die to Rocky Helmet, and now, now, we have our first place back, okay? Now, we have reclaimed first place. There is no way this isn't enough points to reclaim the first place. And just like that, 1664, jump over here to the ladder, refresh real quick, consider it reclaimed. Uh, yeah, so guys, that's kind of how the team pilots. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Really, really good core. Happy I got to feature some games, some high ladder games as well, or early high ladder games as well. Uh, yeah.
no, but uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by the video. Uh, if you guys do enjoy this type of content, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really does help out the uh, channel, and I do appreciate it. I will try to get my webcam fixed for next time, more importantly for stream tonight. But hey, that's besides the point. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in a future video.